all hail, I enfold you in the Elohimic light, the light of your cosmic reality blazing forth its splendor into space. For space, as the dwelling place of God, ought to be hallowed by the radiance of the soul releasing the light of 10,000 suns into manifestation. I come to you this night in that refreshing radiance that is the light of your own soul, that is the solar light of the solar system, of all systems of worlds, of 10,000 suns, blazing forth reality into space and saturating space with the fragrance of the Most High God. Like the formation of a lily, the trumpet of heaven pours forth her fragrance, and mankind engulfed as they are in this fragrance, in the sense thereof, in the very drama of enfolding purity, are aware of the pristine state in all of its magnificence, are aware of the pristine state before it was sullied and contaminated in the consciousness of man as it was envisioned in the beginning by God. This state of God purity beloved hearts of light, has never been altered, but remains to the present the bastion of mankind's unfolding reality. When I come to you then this night, it is with the magnificent certitude that responses will arise in embodied mankind's hearts because we invoke it. It is the will of God that you should respond to the vibratory action of your own soul's purity in its native habitat of the living spirit of God dancing as a flame in his hand and as the flame in the lantern of life by which mankind are illumined and through which they are able to extend the boundaries of purity out into the world and bring about that natural release of heavenly fragrances, which is the fragrances of many souls blending into oneness, into reality, into beauty in its pure God estate. How very marvelous then beloved children of mankind, is the life beautiful as it commences the unfoldment of the cadences of reality in the content of the mind and the sense of awareness that stands forth in the heart of man and speaks of the unspeakable word which it is not lawful for a man to utter. But I am an Elohim, and I come forth from the veil of cosmic purity to speak of that which one day shall be a magnificent reality for you as you hold yourselves to be an inviolate representative of the Holy Spirit of the compassion of God for the universe and for yourselves. For all that is not light ought to be full of light. All that is the absence of light ought to receive light. All that is darkness ought to become light. And in the various shadings of light in manifestation, embodied humanity are able 
to exhibit that which they have never shown forth before, save at that supernal moment when first they danced with God in the ritual dance of creation, when the living electrons and atoms in the process of geometric formation were aware of the divine intent and started the outpicturization of that intent in the world of formation as holy manifestation. There is in the world today a multitude of actions, beloved hearts, that involve psychic phenomena and the function of mankind's human identity in its escape from the human state and the manifestation of human egoism, quite frequently individuals become identified with the psychic world. I want you to know this, and I want you to understand it, for the psychic world is not the spiritual world. The world of mankind's maya, of mankind's illusion, and of the drama of illusion is not the bounty of the merciful spiritual realm where each soul bowing to the light of God in another is able to hold the ritual of compassion for all and the beauty and bounty of that compassion as each soul steps forth through the power of its unfolding reality to greet all parts of life with faith and beauty and love, hopefully manifesting Christ awareness, the Christic consciousness, and the pure light of blazing reality. O oh, mankind, shun and avoid involvement with the astral mutterings of those spirits that peep and mutter, of those conditions which are only the mirage appearing on the desert of South, which can never produce the miracles that heal, the miracles that seal mankind's beautiful solar consciousness in the unfailing and unfading light of God. Do you see, beloved ones, that the avoidance of contact with the astral is one's assurance that he will keep the city of his consciousness free from the doldrums of human meanderings. For much, if not all, of that which happens in the astral world is but a rehash or a remanifestation of that which takes place in the human world of form, which is wholly wedded to the human and to human concept which does not actually hold the flame of reality within its consciousness. And because it does not hold the flame of reality in its consciousness, beloved ones, it involves itself in that interminable manifestation of human viciousness, human despair, and even human joy. Yet human joy when it functions in the astral realm, is but a masquerade of divine joy. It is a game of charades. It is a deceit practiced upon mankind that deprives them of the magnificent concepts of reality which enfold the Christ consciousness in every heart. When embodied mankind will recognize this, and shun and avoid astral or psychic contact, the identifying of themselves with what was called by the wise men of old a form of necromancy. They will understand that communion with the dead is taboo, but communion with the living is indeed the grace of God. Will you understand then the buoyancy of this splendid action which is taking place before your eyes, whereby mankind are not then 
enabled to make contact with those who dwell in the realm of astral horror, but rather in the realm of God reality. The vibratory action of this realm possesses the power of bringing you into a state of consonance with your divine identity, whereby you will be able to reach up through the astral densities of the world and find the solar sun shining in her strength and releasing those magnificent God ideas into the field of your consciousness, which will make your consciousness Christ-like, God-like, and flooded with the passions of immortality. I am Astrea. I come to you this night then, mindful of the universal spirit of love that floods the world with the renewing bond of hope and chastening hearts also conveys divine grace. For God has said that those that he chastens are those that he loves. And if some of you have perchance dabbled in astral contacts, if you have become involved in those activities of human seeking, hypnotism, phony astrology which manifests in the world that is not based upon cosmic astrology and all of those activities which actually deflect the soul from the intended grace of God. Please understand, dear hearts of love, that heaven may wink at the former days of your ignorance when you engaged in those activities which are not productive of that latent good which God has already placed within the fold of your souls as a talisman of cosmic magic to free you by the power of the risen Christ and the vibratory action of the ascension currents from those dregs of human wanderings and human despairs which confuse mankind and bring him into an aborted state where he is not able to bring forth the Christ consciousness in the swaddling garment of his field of mind and conscious awareness. When I come to you then, it is not merely a worded concept which I am releasing into your mind and being. Instead, I am placing there the folds of righteousness and godly purity which are the basis of the foundation of the earth and of every planet and of every star and of the filament of light that lights a universe and a cosmos. Will you understand that? For the field of your consciousness, darkened though it may have been by various activities which have stemmed from human or mortal desires, I tell you truly, shall then be renewed as you accept the chalice of heaven's offering. For heaven is not populated with just one identity, although there is but one spirit. The identities of heaven are manifold. For the Master has said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them too I will bring with me. And so in the great gathering of the stars of life from the systems of worlds that exist throughout cosmos, heaven has brought the very best devotional aspects of consciousness into manifestation. Do you understand that all is God. Do you understand that there is but one spirit? Do you understand, beloved hearts of light, that it is that one spirit that trembles the web of the universe? Do you understand that it is this vibratory action of that one spirit by which you are raised into the rightful socket of your cosmic identity moving as it is through the cosmic thrust of initiation, the initiation of attainment. Well, mankind, do you think 
that all that is written down in your books is the fullness of life? Are you so conceited on the face of it all that you do not understand that the mysteries of life are also written in your hearts and minds and are engraven upon the face of nature. This is God's beauty. This is God's splendor shining in its strength. The radiance of cosmic purity. Oh, angels of cosmic purity, descend in the name of heaven and sunder the heart of the world with the love of God, the love of 10,000 sons. I am the consciousness of God descending into the chalice of your heart and bringing into your breathing, living awareness the field of your consciousness, not only for this moment, but for that timeless time. The reality of God purity, which one day you shall know, because God wills it so. If you are to know it, with the fruition of your consciousness, it will be a God delight and a God intent. But if you refuse the opportunities that now face you, the opportunities that have always faced you, and you succeed in extinguishing the God flame within yourself simply because you take delight in human perversity and sundry manifestations, extinguishing the flame of life in yourself by reason of your refusal to bow the knee to the only begotten of God full of grace and truth, the only begotten Son consciousness, the awareness of the Logos, the awareness of the beginningness of God and the endingness thereof, which is the beginning and end of cycles and of all ages, which is the power of Alpha and Omega, which is the power of God unto salvation to all that believe. For faith, is an alchemical experimentation whereby the very fabric of the soul is washed by the magnificent washings of the Holy Spirit, that cleansing which makes the soul as white as snow. For reflected in the mirror of self is the transcendent and magnificational powers by which the soul of each individual comes at last to the point where it is able to accept the power of the Godhead in manifestation within the force field of the individual consciousness, within the force field of ideas conveyed from the lost word to that word that is found by the individual. And in the finding thereof, that which was lost is at last the revelation of the mind of each one who seeing by a gentle peep into the reality of God the magnificence of the entire structure suddenly stands before the Most High to utter these words I am thankful O God that thou hast manifested thyself in the field of my consciousness, that thou hast placed the focus of thy love within my heart and mind, that thou hast directed me unto thy ways, the ways in the side of the north, the ways in the focus of the white stone, the ways in the new name, which no man knoweth, saving he who hath received it, the ways that are indeed the perfected ways of God conveyed at last in the strands of time unto embodied mankind that will lift them up out of the wretched states in which they have found themselves into those magnificent states in which they will find God revealed at last to them as never before and breaking forth with those hosannas of praise 
which are not only able to penetrate the sheaths of mankind's ignorance and darkness, but also to reach into the very bonds of the deep and penetrate the deep and break forth the fountains of rejoicing and the waters of grace that they may flood the earth and remove at last the bane of mankind's ignorance and bring forth that magnificent strength, the Son of God shining in all of his power and radiance that at last the world, filled to the overflowing with the cup of the Christ consciousness, may indulge itself forever in the great labor of divine cleansing, whereby through the Spirit of God, man is separated from all that is impure, all that is indecent, all that is improper, and reserved a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, wholly dedicated to the concepts of Melchizedek, priest of Salem, to the consciousness that is from the beginning and continues on unto the ending of cycles and the beginning of new cycles. For behold, the Lord speaks even through my heart to say, world without end, I am being immortal, deathless, and full of life. And behold, I will kill with death that which is death, and I will bring into manifestation only that which is life, and I will raise me up a people who shall understand the beauty of holiness and the raising of my name in the whole annals of the earth until the earth in the midst of its trembling and its understanding and the cup of my wrath shall behold my love facing mankind as never before in this age and trembling the web of the universe that I may bring forth a cup of renewal unto all generations who shall call me blessed. Thus saith the Lord, Lo, I am a flame called life. Lo, my spirit filleth all things and is everywhere. Lo, my spirit has spoken to all generations. Lo, my spirit shall raise mankind on high. Lo, that which is lowly shall become that which is exalted. And I will say unto the valleys, come up hither, and unto the mountains, be thou exalted. For all shall know me from the least unto the greatest. And behold, I shall not be removed into a corner any longer, but I will shine forth as a song in the heart of the singer of songs and as the music of the ages that shall exalt all generations until righteousness shall cover the earth as the sea. And behold, the dry land shall be covered with that righteousness which shall cover mankind's barrenness, shall cover mankind's nakedness, and shall bring forth revelation as a spear to pierce the iniquity of mankind's consciousness that has dared to consider itself full, when lo, it is empty and naked and bereft of reason and strength, and shall come to naught, save I, the Lord, infuse the temple by my sudden return thereto. Lo, I come forth. Lo, I manifest. Lo, I am at hand. Lo, all life shall be raised. I am the Lord that covereth the earth with my glory. And behold, the glory of the Elohim stands forth. Lo, the glory of the Elohim stands forth. Lo, the glory of the Elohim stands forth as a shield, as the Urim and Thummim of reality, as the consecrated host, the sacred Eucharist, the one loaf of life, shall be broken for many. And behold, now the exalted power of purity. Purity is light, and light is hope and hope is renewal. Let there come forth now an activity
to the aging of cosmic purity. And let an ancient door in the temple of nations be opened. Ifrata, be opened. Let light stream forth upon the planet Earth. And let the universal plan be revealed to the heart of man. Behold, there is a point in the mind of God. Behold, it is a point called the side of the north. It is the side of righteousness. And the hidden peaks and the hidden valleys are therein revealed. And that which man does in secret shall be shouted from the housetops. Does it not say, O individual, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel? I am the Elohim, Astrea. Lo, I am one of the seven spirits that dance before God. I come to you then this night to evoke a preeminence in you that is the preeminence of cosmic purity. I tell you, when you receive this power within yourself and make it a consecrated part thereof, you will find at last that darkness will flee at your command. You will find when you call unto me and utter my name and understand that you are a part of the being of God, understanding that you are a part of the fiery nature of God, I am. When you understand that one fountain blazes forth over the whole earth and you are a part of that fountain, then the voice of many waters that covers the earth shall speak and call home those children of captivity as well as those who say they are not bound but are truly free. And behold, all nations shall come to know that I am the Lord. The flame within you that speaks is the flame of cosmic purity without alloy. Lo, it does not have in it the content of any chemical element of human vibratory action, but only the pure God flame is there. I am Astrea. I am Astrea. I am Astrea. Lo, I have spoken. Lo, I have brought divine grace into your midst. The spirit most holy that enfolds every part of life, that sunders the power of the psyche and the astral organizations of the world, speaks now in the heart of Africa. I command now in the name of the living God that all psychic activities of human witchcraft and all activities of human darkness and all activities of man's inhumanity to man, of the entanglement of mankind's human action shall stop and cease forwith. Let there never be any action from this point in time and space which shall bring harms to any. For great harms are ended by the power of God Lo, the fiat goeth forth, the fiat of cosmic truth, saying to all powers of darkness, you have no power. Henceforth, you are stripped of all power. And the beginning of the freeing of a continent is at hand. For the Christ banner is raised as a banner of unity over the heart of a world. And the banner that is raised is the banner of cosmic legions. It is the power of the unfurling banner of the Lord. It is the power of the beginning of a new kingdom established and made without hands, but by the agency of the spirit itself in its pure state. O oh, mankind, accept and be free. O oh, mankind, receive and perceive the redemption of universal love. O oh, mankind, reckon with the balance of God. Many, many tekel a parson 
Thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Behold, the hand of God writeth upon the wall. Behold, the hand of Daniel stands forth in the last days. And behold, the freedom and liberation of the world shall begin even now. So be it, in God's name, I am.